All right, the purpose of this video is to explain how to graph using transformations with parent graphs. So these are logarithms, and we're going to basically go over the parent graph for base 2. So if you look at my generalization here at the top, I've got an A value in front, which is like your vertical stretch or compression, your um, B value, which actually could be your coefficient of X, that's got to get factored out, and then your H is left and right, and your K is up and down. So for your um, logarithms, your asymptote is going to be vertical, and it will always be x equals h, and we know that has to be an equation, and that's going to be a dotted line. So this is my parent graph. So my vertical asymptote for my parent graph, base 2, is x equals 0, because there's really nothing subtracted or added to x. So I can write that in just to show x equals 0 is my vertical asymptote. Now, what I want to do first of all is put this in exponential form so you can see why I'm picking these numbers. This is 2 to the y equals x. That's an exponential form of this log equation. Well, y is the exponent, so y can be anything. Negative 1, 0, 1, 2. When I raise 2 to the negative 1, I get 1 half. When I raise 2 to the 0, I get 1. 2 to the 1 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. This is what I call my up and over table. Now, it's got an x and a y, so it is a t-chart because this is the parent graph. So I will actually be plotting these points to actually get my graph. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and just graph the um, x equals 0, which is my vertical asymptote going right through the origin. So my hk is 0, 0. So my starting point is the origin. So that helps because I'm actually plotting these points. So from the origin, I'm going to go over a half and down one. And then I am going to, from the origin, go one zero. So I'm literally plotting the point one zero. Then I'm plotting the point two one. And then I'm plotting the point four two. And all I have to do now is connect those points and draw my curve for this logarithmic function. And it's got to go through the points and then towards that asymptote. It is not going to touch that asymptote. So my domain is going to consist of all positive real numbers. All right, so that is my parent graph. So I'm going to show you another parent graph using base 3. All right, so here we have base 3. You can just ignore this number. So same thing. I'm going to change it and put it into exponential form. So 3 to the y is equal to x. Again, my hk is 0, 0. I'm going to be dealing with a vertical asymptote of x equals 0. And then when I want to put in my numbers, I'm going to choose, well, any number for y. So I'm going to start with some negative 0 and some positives. When I raise 3 to the negative 1, I get 1 third, 3 to the 0, 3 to the 1, and 3 squared. So again, these are actual points that I'm plotting because my hk is 0, 0. So I'm starting from 0, 0, which is how I plot points. So I'm going to go over 1 third and down 1. And again, these are just estimates. Over 1, and obviously not up and down anything. And then over 3, up 1, and over 9, up 2. So I'm a little bit off of this particular grid. But you can see that this is my function. And it is not going to touch that asymptote, but it does get pretty close. So I do need to put arrows to show that same domain, all positive real numbers. So let's see what happens now when I don't have something this simple. So I'm going to really just focus on base 3 for these next examples. So here is base 3, but this time there's a negative in front. So what I want you to understand is this is the over and up chart now. So I am going to always put in these four numbers for my y's because that's my exponent. And then, because it's base 3, I'm going to use the 1 third, the 1, the 3, and the 9. Now, what does this negative in front of my function do? Well, it actually 
changes all the y's to a negative. So I'm going to change the signs to all of these values in the y column. Now I'm going to look to see, well, the hk is 0, 0. So I am starting at the origin, the vertical asymptote is x equals 0. So I'm going to draw that in first. I am going to start at 0, 0, and I'm going to look at my over and up chart. So it says over 1 third, up 1. So I'm going to plot that point. Over 1, and then obviously negative 0 is just 0. And then over 3 from 0, 0, over 3, down 1. And then over 9, down 2. So that's again off my chart. So my function got reflected over the x-axis. My parent function, if you look at the one I'll show you in a minute, I'll show you the one we just did, which was here. So if I reflect that over the x-axis, all the y values change signs, and that's what I end up with. So that's one way of how I can use the over and up chart. Now you might not realize this. Because the origin, the starting point was 0, 0, these are actual points that I'm uh, plotting. So I could plug in these values in for x and get these y values. Well, here's another example. So another example where, again, it's in base 3. But this time, the hk is not 0, 0. So let's look at that starting point. So this time, my hk is 0, negative 2. Well, the vertical asymptote is still x equals 0 because it's x equals h, which happens to be 0. Base 3, so I'm still going to use these numbers all the time. I use those numbers regardless of the base, and I get 1 third, 1, 3, and 9. Now, let's look at our transformations. Well, this time, I know that that 2 in front is going to multiply all of these by 2. Multiply all my y values by 2. And then this makes it go down 2. So what I like to do is I like to take that 0, negative 2, and I like to just kind of plot it as an open circle. And then right through that open circle is where I draw the vertical asymptote. Now, the reason why I like to have that open circle there is because that's my starting point. That's where I use my over and up pattern. So from the open circle, I go over a third, and then I go down two, because that's what it says to do in my over and up. So over a third, and then down two. And then from the open circle, I'm going to go over one. From the open circle, I'm going to go over 3, up 2. And from the open circle, I'm going to go over 9, up 4. So again, I'm a bit off my chart here, but hopefully you understand the graph that I'm about to connect these points with. Now, if you are unsure that you've done this correctly, you can always pick a checkpoint. A nice checkpoint might be this one right here. So let's see if I plug in 3 for x, will I get 0 for y? Well, log base 3 of 3 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. So it checks out. So it looks like I'm doing this correctly. All right, let's try another one. Again, these are all base 3. I just picked base 3 because I thought it would be easier to use the same base. So I am constantly using the negative 1, 0, 1, 2. I am raising 3 to the negative 1, 3 to the 0, 3 to the 1st, and 3 to the 2nd. I'm going to look at my hk, because that determines where I start, where I want to use the over and up pattern. So my hk is 1, 3. Well, that means the vertical asymptote is going to be x equals 1. So I'm going to go ahead and, let's see, I'll plot that first, and then I'll put my open circle directly on it so you can see it. So 1, 3 is here. Now, again, I use that as a marker because that's where I start going over and up. So this time, I don't have to multiply these by anything because I don't have any vertical stretches or any reflections. So I'm going to go over a third and down 1 from that open circle. I am going to go over 1 from the open circle, 
over three and up one from the open circle, and then over nine and up two. And that's where I kind of land off of my grid here. And then I'm going to connect those. And hopefully you can see that logarithmic function being graphed. And the domain would be all real numbers greater than one. So again, this is how I can use this over and up. Now, notice I did not plot one zero. That is not a point on my function. This is why we call it over and up and we don't use X and Y. Um, but you can test a point. So like if you look two comma three, that point right there is a nice point to check. So if I plug in two for X, I should get three for y, and I do, because the log base three of one is zero, and zero plus three is three. So you can check these just to make sure you're doing them correctly. All right, we're gonna try one more. Okay, so one more, this is a tough one, because there's a negative inside the parentheses. Well guys, that negative has to get factored out, because it will affect your horizontal shift. So I'm gonna go ahead and factor it out, Keep it inside the log function, inside the parentheses. So my HK is going to be positive 2 now and positive 4. That means right to up 4. Um, the vertical asymptote is going to be X equals 2. So X equals 2. And that negative that I factored out, that's actually going to affect my x's, so that's a reflection over the y-axis. So let's see what's going to happen. I'm going to put down my same numbers, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and then since it's base 3, 1 third, 1, 3, 9. All right, now, the hk24, that's going to take care of my left, right, up, down. The negative 1, I really need to um, understand that that's a reflection over the y, and it changes all the signs of my x values. So all of those signs got changed. So now let's go ahead and let's put an open circle at 2, 4. So 2, 4, open circle. Let's draw a vertical asymptote right through that open circle. And the open circle, that is just my starting point. Well, let me fix that because it got a little crooked. Um, okay, so open circle is my starting point. So here's my over and up. So my over and up, instead of going right one third, I go left one third from the open circle, down one. So left a third, down one. And then I go left one. And then left three, up one from the open circle. And then left nine, up two from the open circle. I actually had room to do that. Whoops. I think that's up three. Okay, so left nine, up two. Here we go, right there. Um, okay, so now let's see if I can draw this in here. Just kind of make that curve through those points. And again, if I want to check a point, I'm going to go ahead and check this one. So let's see what happens when I plug in a negative seven, I should get a positive six. All right, well, Negative 7, the opposite of negative 7 is 7. 7 plus 2 is 9. Log base 3 of 9 is 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. Oh yeah, that works. So these again, these are not points I'm plotting. Again, I did not plot negative 3, 1. These are over and up, meaning left and right for over and up and down for the up part. So I hope that that made sense. That is how we use transformations. And that's how we can avoid plugging in values to our equation to come up with our graph.